You're absolutely right. All, all praise is Allah's. All honor is His, and I'm all, and I'm truly, truly um, grateful for the opportunity. So I'm going to just start share the screen now, so we can um, I can share my presentation. Hmm. Yes, can everybody, yeah, Mr. Musarat, can I? Yeah, I okay? can see that, everybody yes. You can Thank see you. the document, yeah. great. All right. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. As-salatu salam ala rasulih al-kareem wa ala ahli bayti tayyibin al-tayyibin al-masumin al-mantajibin. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Um, so today's topic is how do we stay in uh, how do we stay in relationships which are toxic per se but um, there's no option of leaving it so i wanted to speak a little bit about just the definition on what is healthy relationship we all know that versus what is a toxic relationship and just these definitions to make things clear and then we we'll go forward so like how the quran says about healthy relationships easy and simple, someone where you feel where there's mawadda, there's rahma, there's, um, there's tranquility. Um, and what does that look like? Person feels safe, secure, person sees you, they hear you, they're vulnerable with you, and you feel safe around them. There is accountability. Um, and I, uh, you know, accountability looks like when you make a mistake, um, you're, you're, it's, you're, you're very okay to be able to say, I hear you um, and, uh, and you feel trusted. You're able to say, I'm sorry. And they're able to say, apologize as well. Um, and you feel a sense of trust and security, openness is loving. And so there's space between you and that person in that relationship. And both people have good boundaries. What does that look like? in the sense that you're able to say, I can't, when you truly authentically, I can't. There's a difference between saying I can't versus I don't want to, but you're okay to be able to say, I don't, I don't feel like it, I don't want to. Not that you're walking on eggshells and you're unable to say that. Um, and I will just speak about that unhealthy relationship part. So uh, you're able to have that good boundaries where you're able to be vulnerable and that respect in each other. Um, looks like being able to accept, honor, and listen and trust the other person for their decisions, where you're not constantly in that, in that, in that relationship where you feel responsible for the other person's well-being. That's sorry, Shazia. Um, we can't hear you. Are you muted? Ooh. Is that okay? So they both um, they both have done some sort of inner work uh, that's a healthy relationship and they're able to own their decision. For instance, if I have made a mistake, like just happened today, I uh, sent uh, lunch to my husband and my husband sent me a snapshot and saying, hey, I would prefer a different recipe um, from, from the recipe that you made. Um, and for me, it was owning my decision and saying, thank you very much uh, for, for, the, for the advice and uh, not feeling like it is, like I am, like it's about me or my self-worth or I feel shame or guilt, but there's a flow in the energy. There's safety and security. Versus um, toxic, harmful or unpleasant relationship. And, um, what does it mean when it means unpleasant relationship? It's like a lack of validation and the lack of being seen, where you feel like you're not being uh, accepted or seen or validated for the person you are and for the weaknesses and the imperfections that you show and that you 
we all are imperfect. And so there's no room for imperfection per se. There, there's a feeling of emotional abandonment. You feel like you're walking on eggshells. You feel like it's all about shame and guilt. And you feel like you're always being criticized, overtly criticized, because you don't want to upset that other person. They might say or do hurtful things to you and then the cycle of abuse comes back and they come back and love you and make you feel good about yourself again. And then again, it goes back to the cycle. Um, you know, they make you feel good about yourself. And then again, it's again being, or they disconnect with you emotionally and leave you for days or weeks, even though you're staying in the same house, but there's like stonewalling where you can't speak or understand that situation. So there's like this on and off, hot and cold, make up, break up type of relationship. You're unable to rely, not predictable, you know? Uh, you constantly, when I said constantly, actually means not predictable means like, you know, he's gonna explode or she's gonna explode or I don't know how she's going to react if I say I can't. So it's like a love and hate dynamic along with a lot of chaos and emotional in intensity. And there's overly critical behavior from the other person where they're unable to see the good. Uh, and we all have good within us, but that person is unable to, they're very self-absorbed, emotionally draining. You don't feel good about yourself around them. Um, it, uh, so it's that feeling of you feeling basically to cut story short, you just feel very crappy around this person <laughs> or in that relationship to begin with. You just are, you know, just living life on a float, just every day in the morning to night, you're just ritualistically just living life uh, with this relationship. And they've convinced you that your version of your reality is totally wrong. Even though you know that this is the truth, we're supposed to be respectful people, but it's just that, it's just manipulation to that extent where you feel not even good about yourself or to that extent where you feel like, you know, your, your value is all wrong and you never have it right and all of that. So, but this person who's in this relationship, if it's marriage, and uh, when I wrote, when I decided family members, so I'm not only going to talk from the perspective of marriage, I'm going to talk from the perspective of parents, from siblings, and uh, any relationships per se that you are in, specifically family members, and then marriage. So it, I'm gonna try to break it down. And let's see how much time permits. So perhaps in marriage, there's an illusion, even though you're living in a very, in a very, uh, you know, uh, uh, uncomfortable situation of this emotional abandonment feeling that you're not feeling validated. However, in marriage, you feel like you have this illusion that there's physical, there's physical chemistry within that relationship. And you feel like, no, but there's physical chemistry. And you know, we we're intimately really good, so it's fine. But deep down inside, you know, there's this is not a healthy relationship. That is a definition um, about harmful, unpleasant relationships. Where am I saying that? I am not a certified clinical psychologist and I have to be really honest with you all. I'm just a simple researcher and a student who brings things together and just presents it. Um, and I've done a course in relationship advisory and that's what I do along with my skills in, in learning of the Quran and the, and the Sunnah. However, today's thing is, today's most of today's content is by a lady that I follow very carefully and I really like her mindset. Her name is Dr. Saleh Afridi. She is a clinical psychologist and runs this institute in Dubai, the UAE, called the Lighthouse Arabia. And she's a managing director there. And she has her she has an Instagram uh, channel, which is called Dr. Saleh Afridi. You can find her online very readily. And so most of the content is from there. So it is from a, from a skilled practitioner point of view, uh, what a clinical psychologist would have to say for a safe relationship versus an unhealthy. So this is just a, a simple definition of understanding. I know all of you are, especially we're living in a time and age where we watch YouTube on times two, and we hear WhatsApp on times two, and I'm guilty of that, guilty of that too as myself. We want everything quick fixes. So I know we all want to get to the surface of it. Tell me how, tell me how can I live in an emotionally draining relationship where I feel abandoned, not heard, not validated. And I feel like there's constantly this, this, this gloomy cloud in front of me, but I need to go through a process to be able to 
identify definitions and then we go forward. So how can you deal with a toxic sibling or a parent or a partner? Now, when I say a toxic parent, sibling or a partner, I don't like giving labels of narcissism or this one is narcissistic or this one is toxic or, you know, um, this one is uh, a gaslighter. They just want a gaslight situation. Then you can look up these labels or this one is very toxic. I, I hate giving labels because when you come from Tohidi point of view, and that's what's going to be my conclusion, is that, and hear this out carefully, and I refer this to uh, one of the speakers and a scholar that I follow very carefully, and I've learned a lot from him. His name is Dr. Farouk Siklashpa, also a world-renowned scholar um, in the Shi'i uh, school of thought, and generally in Islamic uh, school of thought. Um, and one of his talks, he's explained uh, last Ramadan, he's done a topic, which I can post it on chat and give it to uh, Musarrat, is that if you believe in an all-wise, all-merciful, all-perfect God, then you believe his creatures are absolute evil, toxic, then it goes back to the creator that you believe that there's something in the creator who also has to be evil. It's a concept, it's a thought, we need to deepen our tawheed and understanding this. That's why I'll leave it here. If you believe in an all wise, all perfect, all loving God, that means his creatures intrinsically, in, in an intrinsic sense, have to also have these attributes of wisdom, perfection, uh, loving, merciful, they have to be that. But it's something that they do, which is our actions, which make us toxic. So please separate these two. And when we're labeling our relationships, our siblings, our parents, or even our partners and saying, you're toxic, you're narcissistic, you are so-and-so, yes, we are going through relationships, which manifest attributes of an unhealthy relationship. However, the person intrinsically is God's creature, number one. Anybody who's God's creature intrinsically or in and of itself can never be evil, but their actions make them evil. You know the whole concept of separating a person from their actions? So the person is a God's being, but their actions are toxic. The actions make him a toxic personality or make her a toxic personality or the behavior is now made a character, which is a toxic character. But intrinsically, no one in and of itself in absolute sense is toxic. No one is because everybody is God's creature. I just want to keep it till here. So if our parents are manifesting toxic characteristics or our siblings are manifesting toxic unpleasant, disrespectful characteristics. And we don't have an option to leave. Divorce is not an option. I'm not here to give you, uh, in, you know, to give you um, rulings on where divorce is endorsed by Islam. You can go to your local sheikh and ask uh, where Islam itself comes in and endorses divorces. Uh, if there's, uh, you know, if there's domestic abuse, if there's physical abuse, if there is, there's a whole, and I've done a talk on this as well. Uh, I think uh, maybe I haven't uploaded on YouTube, but you can go and ask. However, there are certain situations where divorce is not an option. Even though Islam gives you that option, but you yourself have taken that responsibility or that decision that I don't want to divorce. If this partner is showing toxic characteristics and we've identified that well how could you you or leaving your family is not an option or leaving your sibling is not an option leaving your parents is not an option but what how do you live with people uh with uh god's creatures who manifest or display toxic characteristics and behaviors or behaviors which are very draining so what can you do in such circumstances First, and it's most important to acknowledge that in any situation, we always have three choices. And this is now the empowerment part of the talk. Always remember this. Either you can change the situation, or you can leave the situation, or you accept the situation. So if we must accept that we will never be able to change our spouses, changing a situation looks like you try your best. 
how can you change a situation? How can you change your family, your siblings, or your spouse in the Quran? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself says, in Allah you ghayru ma bi'an fazakum. Allah, in Allah, in Allah, in Surah Raad, that Allah will not change the change the situation of a nation until they do not take responsibility of themselves. Hatta you ghayru ma bi'an fazakum. Till they do not take responsibility of themselves. This is our scripture saying, look at the system of the universe. If a person does not believe that they, are, they have characteristics which are toxic, which are unpleasant, which are disrespectful, there is no way in the universe, please come and tell me that you can change that person. When God himself, the creator of the system of cause and effect says, everybody needs to take responsibility for themselves. When they take responsibility of themselves, knowing what is wrong within them, the change happens. No, you can influence, you can do, you know, you can invite, you can teach, you can control, but there are a hundred participants right here. And I think the ones who've come here will vouch for this because they want to know another way out. If they could have control and change that person, they probably would be here <laughs> to begin with. So we cannot, can you change the situation? Try it. Try it with ways which I'm going to tell you. If you cannot change the situation, then leave it. But if you made a choice that I can't leave, how can I, how can I leave my parents or you know, not make them my parents? My values, my, my religion doesn't allow me that. Or do katairami or you know, break relationship with a toxic sibling or a toxic parent or a, or a partner which I choose not to divorce. Even though I might have the permission or might not, I don't know, that's a different topic. I don't choose to divorce. I can, I, can I change the situation? Well, then change it. Change the person, change your parents, change your sibling. How can you change? There are respectful ways to change and you know them, you're all an educated crowd. You can, you can, by controlling and nagging, you know we don't get anywhere other than only hurting ourselves by disappointment. But changing can look like influence, it could look like inspiring, it could look like when, I'm just coming to it, I don't wanna give out, uh, I don't wanna, expedite but change the situation if you can't change the situation then leave it but today's thing is what if i don't want to leave it then accept the situation what does accepting a situation look like does it look like does it make you an, someone who is now oppressed does it make you someone who has um you know given in and surrendered and submitted to the oppression which is being done to you as uh, you know someone who, who's showing uh characteristics of toxic behavior and unpleasantness. So does acceptance look like that? No, acceptance does not look like that. We must accept that we will never be able to change our spouse. That's what acceptance looks like. We will not be able to change our parents if they are, if they are manifesting attributes of um, disrespect or they're manifesting attributes or displaying attributes of um, the toxic attributes that we just discussed. Can we change them? Acceptance looks like accepting this fact i cannot change anybody other than myself and my life changed when i accepted this from my molecular level not that my mind says it that no no no, you can't change anybody but i'm still controlling nagging you know doing all the three c's correcting criticizing complaining if that's still continuing, then my heart still hasn't believed that I can't change someone. So does it mean that I get disappointed? Does it mean that I just leave? That's your choice, your prerogative, you can leave. But acceptance looks like I can't change the other person. But what I can do is, if I feel divorce is out of the question because of my family, religious, or whatever other reasons, then leaving is not an option. Number two, acceptance looks like owning your decision. That's acceptance. Now you own that decision that I choose to stay in this relationship my, with my parents or siblings, whoever is displaying attributes of uh, disrespect or unpleasant or toxic behavior. I still choose to stay in that relationship, come from a place of empowering yourself with true, empowering yourself with uh, decision. That's point number two. Point number one, accept this, which is in front of your screen. You can't change anybody else. Point number two, own your decision. Don't make it a sob story or a mindset of, you know, I'm um, that victim mindset, that poor me. That victim mindset, that poor me is going to work counterproductive. 
And I'm just coming to that why we end up living in that relationship, but as a victim mindset. Number three is so the only other option left, accepting the situation means changing ourselves. And that's what I have uh, when I was hearing Dr. Saleh Afridi, and that's what the Quran or our scripture says this the God of the universe who's made this this system of cause and effect, which is all wise, all perfect, all merciful, keeps on repeating the same self. You cannot change the situation of a nation till every person in that nation takes responsibility of themselves in perfecting themselves from vices to virtue. So changing ourselves. So what does that change in ourselves look like? Again, I'm repeating myself, accepting, I cannot change them. And there are many people who come for, um, you know, for coaching that tell me what I can do to change that other person. So if you don't believe that, if you believe still that, no, I can change that other person, that person should change, you're setting up yourself for disappointment. Please have realistic expectations. And then that's, that's, that's point number three, point A, which I'm just coming to. So you're most welcome to leave um, if you believe that, you know, I have the magic wand to change others because you're actually going against the Quranic scriptures if they're believers on this. If they're not, then it's a universal understanding. We cannot change anybody other than ourselves. That's acceptance. Number two, acceptance looks like I can only change myself. And number three, so what does it look like changing myself in a, in a situation where there's toxicity, where there's people who are very self-absorbed and all of that? I'm just about to say what, what else? Why, does, why are we unable to pick ourselves up and change what's wrong in me? What is the whole thing? I'm just coming to that. But point number two is very important. After point number one, I can't change anybody. Point number two is this. Own your decision. If you have chose to stay in that situation, if it's your part, forget your, if it's not your partner, if it's your parents and your siblings, I choose to still do relationship with my um, unpleasant uh, relationship, my, my family member, i.e. sibling, i.e. parents, i.e. I find it really disrespectful to say even my toxic parents. I apologize, but yes, I also, uh, I can relate to you. Uh, when you have toxic parents or parents who manifest, display toxic characteristics, but that's our test. And I'm just coming to that. So step number three, step number one, own your decision. If you're unable to own your decision, please seek out help. I'm available. There are millions and millions of people, professional help available to help you with this line. Call a, call a counselor or coach and say, I'm unable to own my decision to stay in this relationship, period they'll help you walk through your situation. You're unable to because intents help you go forward. So point number one, own your decision. Um, point number two, accept that you cannot change anybody other than yourself. Point number three, that means there's some changing in ourselves required. What does that mean? Since you can't change the situation, you can't leave the situation. What can you do? Accept the situation by changing yourself. So what is it that you have to change yourself? Do you become like, you know, one of those codependent. I'm just, I'm, I'm just going to, uh, uh, I'm just going to share this. What does it mean to, to live in a toxic relationship by owning your decision, but not becoming one who lives on eggshells, but one who is empowered in these relationships? What does it mean? Most toxic relationships stem back to unresolved childhood trauma. So the person who is showing characteristics of toxic, unpleasant relationship or the person who is experiencing these, 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 this display of unpleasant behavior comes from childhood trauma. What does trauma mean? Trauma means any situation in your life, uh, let me just get, and this is all referenced by clinical psychologists. Um, can't find it here, but just trauma. You know, we use this word trauma very loosely and very easily. But trauma means feeling this, feeling powerless. And often when I work with, when I work with myself or other sisters, they often say that it triggers my powerlessness. It makes me feel like I'm not good enough. It makes my self-worth, it makes me feel I'm not, a, I'm not valued. And so how do I work on that? If someone is doing something to make me feel this way, where does it come from? It's a, it's a trauma. It's coming from a place where you felt powerless 
but you were unable to pick yourself up and say, that's not true. I am worthy. I am valuable. But when you were growing up, you were unable to separate yourself from that difficult situation. And so trauma means any situation in your life where it was too difficult for you to understand and manage. And then what happened? You just pushed it down into your subconscious and you did lie. So trauma is any situation when you were unable to, you know, go through it uh, and understand and learn from that situation, but you just pushed it down. So childhood trauma looks like trauma bonds are created as a result of your needs not being met as a childhood, where your parents or your caretakers wanted to, you to be a certain way, beautiful, intelligent, but they didn't necessarily see you. They just appreciated you for the person for your grades or for the looks or for how perfect you were as a, as a child, as your actions. But they didn't say, you Shazia are, you know, I love you for who you are. I don't only love you when you score well or when you listen to me or when you behave the way I want you to be. That's, that's you, you might not accept it at that moment, but that's when you're not feeling loved and heard and accepted for a person you are. That's why Mom Jabra Sadiq says, new parents and parents in this group, zero to seven, let your child feel like he's a king. What does that mean? Yani, you don't keep on parenting them at that age. I'm not, if, if we're one of the counselor coaches in our group called Sukana Tavar, if she's here, she will be able to speak further on this hadith how to parent your children so they can grow up to be evolved, um, godly human beings, uh, godly creatures. So sometimes unresolved childhood trauma looks like when we weren't validated and seen. Um, and then in our relationships, if my, if my parent is still doing that or my sibling is doing that or my husband is or my, my spouse or my wife is doing that to me, it'll trigger this same feeling, this feeling of you are not loved. You are not accepted. Dr. Uh, Muhammad, Dr. Jawad Shamali has done an amazing talk, one hour long, 45 minute talk on pain equals a self abandonment. Excellent talk. He talks about this more. It's very important that you understand this concept. What is it that triggers you about that person in that relationship? So the first question I ask, how does that person make you feel? Recognize that feeling that emotion, that's very important. Be aware of that feeling. What is that feeling? Does that make person make you feel? And so you didn't feel that it was okay for you to feel full within that early childhood relationship. And if you had childhood like that, you will most likely grow up and find a relationship where you will mimic something similar, where you will not be seen and where you will be heard, where you will not be heard and you will necessarily be respect, not be respected because you were not seen, validated or respected in your childhood. So. Uh, as, as a, in, in marriage. But what about that parent who's still the same? What do you do there? So on all my pages, I have this one headline, which is a solution. All solution is in Tawheed. We need help as human beings at large. We need support. So if you identify yourself in a toxic relationship with any family members, first thing is, after I've asked you to do that three things, Seek help. Inna mu'minun Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, Surah Hujrat says, mu'minun ikwa. Find those brothers, find that sister, find that therapist, find the Muslim therapist, the counselor who can help you find back your value in Allah. What happens in therapy is that, uh, not in all generally, it would be wrong for me to say that, is that sometimes with me, what happened is that I came halfway where I was, where I understood all of this, that yes, I wasn't maybe validated, heard, and accepted as a, as, as a child, as a human being by itself. And I, I, I had a toxic childhood to a certain degree, but then I'm stopped, but I'm left there. Then how do I find my own self-worth? and my value within myself so that I can believe in myself. It was like said that, okay, go love yourself. Be compassionate to yourself. My question to you is this, how can an imperfect being who's empty from within find love for themselves? It's like an empty glass. Like I don't have a glass here, but an empty glass. And you tell that empty glass, oh, you know what? Now just love, oh glass, you love yourself and fill yourself up with water. They'd be like, I'm empty. It's only an all perfect, 
all absolute perfect being can can give us that perfection and that love someone who we can trust someone who we can find value someone who we we know that they're not up and down they're not judging us for our actions because we're imperfect and the solution is this if you're suffering with self worth and self value go back find a teacher who can help you find trust in allah again because our parents manif our parents actually manif our parents image god to us if we were not forgiven as childhood i can tell you to recite thousand times all of our food it has its effects momentarily on you on your soul but you were never forgiven so forgiveness doesn't has no example in your life because you were never forgiven so you will always hold that mistrust in your heart will that person forgive me is that person going to forgive me because no one you were not displayed forgiveness find a person who can show you god's love for you unconditional love for you allah in the quran never says that if you don't do this i will not love you please challenge me surah zumar surah number 39 ayat 23 if i'm not forgive if i forgot and please forgive me 39 la taknutu min rahmatillah in allah in allah yaghfur dhunub jami'a i repeat myself and i feel like allah i take my look at imam zainul abidin's whispered prayers 15 whispered prayers the one who's in fear the one who's hopeful what is imam zainul abidin's main crux that he's speaking to allah you can never turn your back on one who calls on you this is the crux of the entire talk people who display toxic behavior they have veiled themselves from the light of allah's love and mercy veiled because of our actions because of childhood trauma because of whatever reasons people who are unable to live in toxic relationships or people who are trying to forget unable you can leave that's your choice but people who want to live in these relationships and be their best versions need to go back and first find their self worth which gets triggered in these relationships because these relationships are like they're they're preying on each other the toxic person will keep on criticizing you keep on putting you down and you will keep on feeling bad about yourself so how do you break this unhealthy cycle not to take your value and identity from limited beings and i've done this talk so you can go back to youtube and rehear that talk again find your value in the all perfect the all loving the unconditional love of allah allah will love you even if you come with all sins because it says it in the quran in allah yaghfur dhunub jami'a He he will take you back. What does it look like taking you back? Yani he is there to hear you because he is sami and basi. If we hold mistrust in our hearts that will, is Allah hearing me or not, that shows a lack of tawhid. We need to go back to someone to help us guide us through tawhid. What does it mean that Allah is all wise, all merciful? Why is there so much carnage? This coronavirus. Go back to all your tawhidi concepts. why is there evil if the allah is all merciful he's all just and why do good things happen to bad people these are concepts which you need to go back and answer for yourself your heart needs to feel love secured with allah once your heart feels now how is your heart going to feel love and secured when allah is not a he's pure existence pure existence is everywhere he will send that person in your life i know there are a lot of people who will vouch for me there was that person in my life too Allah will send his light of love and mercy in a form of a person in a form of a book in any form and way please message me ask me any questions about Allah's love and light of mercy when we wail ourselves when we are unable to trust Allah we look we take this empty container and look for our self worth and value to other people please fill me up i'm feeling so bad about myself but when i start building my relationship with allah which is our true purpose in life marifat of allah is our true purpose and how do i increase my marifat of allah through the challenges and tests which come my way i go back to tawhid so that's a different topic but what happens in my relationships if i have time i might just uh, my time's nearly up 
what happens in these relationships, we start living a codependent relationship versus interdependent relationship, where I start finding my validity and my self-worth in that person. So you are giving away more to that relationship than your partner. This could be emotional, psychological support. In a codependent relationship, the scales are always tipped. Your partner constantly and consistently demands from you, and there is very little room for you to want or need something in that relationship. So you don't really fully grasp the concept of healthy boundaries. You're always looking ways to how can I please that person? How can I oblige the person? I cannot say this to that person. They're going to shout at me. You're, you know, you hate confrontation, but there are respectful confrontations as well, which will be another talk, which I will uh, schedule with Masara. that part two to this is healthy communicative skills that we need. So we need to understand all this. And now how do I build on communicative skills? But between understanding this and communicative skills is something in between. We have to work on our tohees. If I do not know my value, my first I build my relationship with Allah. If I'm unable to trust that Allah, if I am not sure if he loves me or if he's a transactional God, I have to do good, then only Allah will love me. If that's my understanding of Allah, I can teach you as many mantras or skills or communication skills, but you will always have that lack within. You will always feel empty within and look for love from external. But when you come from full and you go into these relationships, either if it's your parents or your siblings or your spouses, you come from a place of self-confidence. Self-confidence does not look like me, myself, and I. This is what I like. If you don't like it, you can leave. Self-confidence, according to Tawheed, looks like respect. I honor and accept you and listen and trust you the way you are. I have my weaknesses, you have yours. I am imperfect, so are you. I have my trauma, so do you. I want to be able to hear and understand and have realistic expectations. I don't have time to go into codependent versus interdependent relationships. Please look this up. If you feel you are living a codependent relationship, this is a toxic relationship, but you need to work on yourself um, versus an interdependent relationship. I don't have time for that. The solution, and now we finally come to the solution. Three simple solutions. Number one, have very realistic expectations of your family members. If this person has never said sorry, they're not going to start now. So if you feel like, why can't you be, or why, if you're telling your sibling, why can't you be like someone else? No, have realistic expectations from that person. Realistic expectations looks like this. And I tell myself, an apple doesn't far, fall far from the tree. If there is anxiety and there is ups and lows of emotions in your family or if your spouse's family, or if your parents, uh, if you see your grandfather or your grandmother, and there's, there's, a, there's a cycle you can see of a behavior that now you're seeing in your parents or your siblings or your spouses. And remember, an apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Similarly, I tell myself, Shazia, you, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Just like how I have taken good qualities from my parents, I've also taken, I've also, you know, being, I've also image uh, or example, uh, see, it display their weaknesses too. And I might pick on them and become that too. So I need to be one, I need to be authentic and I need to have realistic expectations, not unrealistic expectations because between realistic and unrealistic expectations, there's a lot of disappointment, in, uh, hurt, anger, and all of that. You don't have time more, but you can hear Dr. Saleh Afridi. She has an eight minute Instagram on this. I'll send you the link. Do not argue with this person because you're always going to end up leaving the argument worse. So what do we do then? How do we explain our truth? Communication skills. But I work from inside out. I don't work from outside in giving you all the communication skills and saying, hey, say this. Hey, say that. And internally, you're lacking that self-worth and you know, self-value for yourself. So that's, the, I think the next step for us would be for you to go hear that talk on self-worth. And I should do another talk on how to find your self-worth in Tawheed. Just that talk on that. And then we should do a talk on communication skills. So for instance, what does it mean don't engage in argument? Means speak about I, not you. Can you talk of an, can you speak your truth without using you, should, and could? So in the beginning, when I was learning these skills, 
and also working on my you know working on myself from within working on my values and my self worth it was difficult but then i realized that i was using the you and the shoulds and the coulds but my attitude was not controlling commanding criticizing condemning and demeaning it was more like i'm wondering or i'm hurt i'm going to take a uh, um a space but if i work on my self worth it was it, i kept on telling myself it's not about me it's not about me it's about the other person they can criticize they can feel bad they can say whatever they want to say this is not about me so i was able to take that healthy space space i have also done a course on space this acronym space i would send the notes on i would send the uh, google drive link on that how do you take that space check in with yourself and then go back and have respectful communication step number 3 seek out people who value you because we all need support do this alone allah himself in the quran says in number mu'minun ikhwa we need to have that brotherhood bonding we have to be together find that sister or the friend not someone who is instigating you to not uphold your godly values not someone saying let's have a pity party let's talk back by let's gossip let's this let's that but someone who can bring you back to your higher version that's true living life life is all about challenges and burdens um allah in the self in the quran says li yablu akum ayyukum ahsan amal you will go through the challenges and burdens in life but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself says wa bashir as-sabirin when you have courage and patience to be able to hold uphold your truth and speak with respect that's when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa bashir as-sabirin and allah says that the nazul al malaika that the angels reveal on them and make their paths easy for them and i have seen this in my life as a miracle for myself when i started taking responsibility for myself even though i don't come from a toxic relationship to that extent but yes uh, one of my parents is um, is has a mental health issue so it's been always a toxic relationship as in it's always about that parent and not about me so with the with the heat coming in when i feel dishonored i step back and i say this all honor belongs to allah no one can dishonor me is there truth in what this person is saying then i have to be accountable and say i apologize if there is no truth in what that person is saying and it's all rubbish then i need to step back and say you can take your time to say whatever you want I tell I say that in my head I don't say it this is my test every challenge and burden in our lives has the potential for our spiritual growth has a potential for tasqiya in nafs you need a you need a coach a help who can help you take you through the situation where you process your emotions recognize them accept them investigate become curious about these emotions when you feel triggered nurture them with tawhid so i leave you with this solution have realistic expectations don't go into arguments refine your communication skills work on your self worth it's not about you all the time and seek support support looks like someone sitting with you holding that space with you and helping you go through the rain concept which dr tara brock explains really well recognize that emotional what is that trigger accept it investigate it being curiosity which the quran even says alaykum an fasakum you know you are you are responsible for yourself so investigate it where is it coming from you need a practitioner skill practitioner to do that and then the last part of the rain and is very important nurture it with tawhid all problems lie in the lack of tawhid and all solutions lie in, in tawhid whatever i have said today are referenced by a clinical psychologist and scholars um if you like i can give you all the references wa akhir dawana an alhamdulillah rabbil alamin sorry i took more than that's fine i think you did it really quickly to be honest yeah i think you covered the topic really well but as i know inshallah we will have some more sessions but it was just obviously some information there to work yeah. on um and i'm sure as we're working on there might be some more questions that will sure. come up or some might need some more help as well um are you able to share your details um in the chat as well absolutely um, if anybody wants to contact you or just needs a little bit of help as well 
um, you can guide them as well. But I mean, you've covered the topic really well. And I think um, it was perfect. It wasn't just a relationship in a marriage, but as you know, we're always in some kind of relationship with our families, siblings, friends, you know, um, extended families as well. So I think this um, advice was just general mm. that will help us uh, working on. Um, just before we um, open it up to everyone for the questions, um, I'm, I'm really curious, the way you connected this topic was with um, childhood trauma. Uh, I mean, um, recently, as I've been doing more sessions with Ikra Library and over the pandemic, um, this childhood trauma has become a big, a huge thing um, that's coming up very often. And I'm sure that uh, when we were younger and you know how we've always been in um, staying with um, extended families, cousins, sisters, you know, big families, um, it wasn't something that was really looked into about childhood trauma um, how do we make amends or how do we a lot of us probably don't even know whether we've been uh, we've got through childhood traumas or um how do we kind of make yeah how do we kind of make amends and obviously we want to try and make sure it doesn't get repeated uh, which i think um sister suke nata was doing a lot of sessions for parenting we've got a session tomorrow at 11 o'clock um so we can try and um avoid uh, but how do we go about things that have happened or we're not conscious or we're not even aware where they so happen. um if i've understood your question right you're asking if you feel like you've been through a trauma trauma means when you've been through a situation a difficult situation that you were unable to resolve or understand or take lessons from and you've just pressed them down and that situation made you feel not good about yourself is that correct? So that's a that's a trauma. Yes. So that's one question. And made you feel powerless. Is, um, yeah. The other question is, how do you? I mean, most of us probably aren't aware that they've had childhood or trauma or not, right? Because um, you just think that's normal, right? So um, yeah. how do people recognize it through so relationships? In therapy, yes, in relationships, you get triggered, and the trigger is usually feeling powerless. Mostly, it comes up to feeling powerless feeling not good about yourself, feeling inadequate, you know? So it gets triggered um, when you've done something for the other person and the other person is unable to appreciate you and you feel not good about yourself and then you go on making that other person realize how important it is to appreciate or appreciate you. So it's a trigger. And then it's a crazy cycle where you spin, where you are wanting that affirmation, but you're not getting. Till you realize either in therapy or in these sessions that you realize that I'm empty. Actually, even when now my spouse or my parents or my siblings, they do appreciate me, I'm unable to receive graciously. I'm unable to receive appreciation and, you know, in whatever form and way it comes or gifts or apologies or whatever it is. I'm just, I'm, my heart is closed. I'm unable to receive. So this needs, you need to go to a skilled practitioner for sure. You need help. You need someone who can help you walk through these emotions. Mm -hmm. where you, first of all, come to that realization and understanding. And if this uh, skill practitioner is uh, more on the monotheistic, so he, the mindset, mental framework, it's Nura Lanu, because they will guide you back to your pure source. See, expectations is very important. They, what happened to me is that I came to realizations that yes, I had a lot of childhood trauma, which, has, which, which manifests as unforgiveness. So I was holding a lot of unforgiveness. And unforgiveness is actually one of the ethical sins, but it's also some in some ways, it's also Sharia sin. Doesn't let us grow spiritually if you're holding unforgiveness. Does unforgiveness look like accepting someone's wrong? No. Does it look like now you have to submit and surrender to the action? No. Unforgiveness looks like, forgiveness looks like when you don't give power to that person anymore, when you don't hold that story about someone who's hurted you anymore. In simple reasons. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Sare ila maghfiratin. When I realized in therapy that I held a lot of unforgiveness for the family members that I was holding, that was stopping my spiritual growth towards manifesting virtues or uh, love and accept towards receiving or giving. So, how, so then there's work on forgiveness. How do you learn to forgive? From a place of you don't have to accept that that action, but how do you learn to forgive? You have to go back to tawhid. That's important. Learning to forgive through tawhid. So that's one way. So you asked me about childhood trauma. So yes. identifying 
uh, what are your triggers that happens in therapy and then learning what are you holding are you holding unforgiveness usually it's unforgiveness which is a spiritual uh, ethical vice holding grudges hate resentment for god's creatures even though they're wrong but you won't be able to grow sharia wise you'll do all what you're doing but spiritually you will not be able to grow even though you're doing all your sharia because you're holding hate grudges and resentment for god's creatures in your heart even though they're wrong but you're holding it so that has an impact and an energy and an effect on your heart sometimes it manifests as physical ailments and sometimes it's that it's that blockage which you need to help to unflow so people go for healing people go for energy all good but you need to come to a place where you are now afloat with all meditations do whatever you want to be able to come back and perfect that tohid why am i unable to forgive this person that's the question right and then work through there through tohid you know some people usually come and tell me i'm never going to forgive that person never that means i am they are that person has hurted me Surah Al-Maidah says it very easily, no one can spiritually remove you from your spiritual says, Ya Ayyuhal Ladheena Amanu 5105 became my purpose in life. It became my guiding light for me. What people do, they do, they are weak, they are imperfect. I am weak, I am imperfect. I am no perfect person. Someone has wronged me. The inability to let go and forgive comes from a deep rooted self-conceit. And I apologize, but it comes through process where we help that person realize there is, you see, we're, we haven't got the love and affection because of childhood trauma. Now, how do I hold myself afloat in this world? The ego, which is a self-delusion, it's a good thing. Ego is good. Allah has only given us this creation, this ego delusion of ourselves. But if the moment I learn to let go of someone's wrong, I don't say the action is wrong. I say the person I let go, some part of me feels unheard. There's no story anymore there. So that needs to go deep down inside, spoken about, talked about, given that space. Sometimes it takes weeks in uh, co coaching. For me, even you need to give that day in the sun to that person. And then eventually one day they say, I let go. I'm not, it's okay. Mm -hmm. It comes, it's a process. So childhood trauma has an effect of, we holding into a lot of unforgiveness, subconsciously or consciously, hurt, resentment, hate, unable to trust Allah. He's all forgiving. And so all of that. So for me, Tawheed. Okay. First working with your therapist, finding your triggers, and then going to Tawheed. Very important if believers. Wow. And non-believers, I don't know. They're Tawheed. Um, I think talking about Tawheed, somebody's mentioned that obviously Tawheed, um, on a basic level is believing in one God, which all of us believe in. Um, so what do you mean when you say working on the Tawheed? Because we all believe in one God. So it's obviously deeper, right? Yes. And, you know, it can be as deeper as you wanted to say, or as simple as it is, believing in there is only one absolute perfection existed, which is Allah. You and I are nothing but Allah's creatures. All honor belongs to him. All honor is his. What are we actually fighting for when we're unable to forgive? He dishonored me. It's a gift, right? So the honor is Allah. That's Tawheed when I mean to say, to understand this, inna izzata lillahi jamia, to be able to deeply understand, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raja'oon. I am Allah's. I am no one else except Allah's and I'm honorable like him. Amir Ramani says, it's enough honor to me to believe that I am God's creature. The apostrophe X makes the apostrophe S makes me feel honorable enough. That's enough of honor. Now, when I see my sins and all of that, I come with Ubudiya. So when I say Tawheed, to be able to understand Allah's attributes of Al-Hakim, Allah's attributes. So usually there's a lot of people learn God's attributes and they start enchanting it. Enchanting will only help you that much, but enchanting with an understanding when we're doing these attributes of Allah from learned, renowned scholars, pure knowledge. Where is our source of Tawheed? Where are we learning Tawheed from? Are we learning Tawheed from non-Muslims? It's going to be, it's going to be limited Tawheed because they believe that um, just believing in Nabi Isa is you get salvation. 
but that's limited only for us. Just by believing in the Holy Messenger, we cannot get salvation. Salvation looks like manifesting godliness, goodliness in situations that we are in. That requires deep tawakkul. That requires detaching from anything other than Allah. Rationally, our mind will say it. From the heart, can I do it? Can I completely detach from everything other than Allah and say, Allah, it is only you and you alone. So working on Tawheed means this. Tawakkal, you know, understanding the concept of dunya. Understanding the gifts have to be in the heart and the gift giver has to be in my heart and the gift has to be in my hand. Who am I doing tawaf of? The gifts or the gift giver? Mm. Whose opinion matters to me more? The gift giver or the gifts? Gifts means my relationships, my things that I have. So that's Tawheed, understanding these deeper, simple concepts. I don't even call them deeper, like understanding all of this. Why am I unable to forgive? Why do I feel dishonored when someone comes and dishonors me when there's no truth in what they're saying? Why do I? But honor is a gift by Allah. Okay, today is my test. There's no, he's not giving me honor, fine. But all honor is in the all perfect, all wise, all merciful being. No one can honor and dishonor me in that sense. Mm. No one, do you understand? It's a, it's a place of complete empowerment when you understand Tawheed from that. So Dr. Farooq Siklashfar, siklashfar.com has, he's done a lot of courses and I have really, Imam Khomeini's book, Adab Salat, he's done a course on that too. Um, it's book one and now we're on book two. He explains it very simplistically. He's also doing a course on attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's six minute talk on each attribute of Allah. Easily explained, understood, apply it, adopt it. You need support, we're all there. Forget me, I'm sure there's so many people on this chat or in the Muslim world. Uh, Sister Barak from the US, is, she's a clinical psychologist, come Muslim counselor. Sister Sukana for, I mean, there's millions of people. Allah says, I open our ways. If, yes, you, if you take responsibility. So this is what Tawheed is. Why am I unable to hold godly values in difficult situations? Excellent. That means if anybody has any questions, feel free to unmute yourself or you can use the chat as well um, to message or even personally message Sister Shazia as well um, on the chat as well. Dr. Farooq Siklashfar and his website is siklashfar.com. If you keep forgiving, what about justice? How will people stop harming you? May I, am I allowed to take this question? Yes, yeah, go yes, on. Okay, so remember one thing. This is a very deep question, very important question. When someone hurts you or harms you or does wrong to you, uh, on, on a physical level, no one is saying that you don't stand up for justice. Justice does not mean that you stand up for hadal. You stand up for qurbatan lillah. You stand up because Allah has instructed you to stand up for justice. That's what Imam Hussain says. If it was only me and Yazid, I would have still done what I do. So Imam, when people say Imam Hussain stood up for hadal, it's bringing him down. Imam Hussain only did qurbatan lillah for Allah, by Allah, of Allah, with Allah, for Allah. Not about justice as an attribute of Allah. So when you're standing up for Adal, and Adal looks different in different cases, sometimes it looks like silence. Sometimes it looks like speaking up with respect. Sometimes wisdom dictates that you take that space and go back. Sometimes it dictates that you have to go and do that case court, uh, the court case. However, Spiritually, you're not an iota of you feels dishonored. Not an iota of you feels something has been taken away from me. Because if Tawheed is very deep, Sayyid Azain have said, Allah, Jami. Yani she's seeing it from a Tawheedi lens where she stood up for, as per Allah's instructions to to you know, speak the truth and forbid the evil. But internally, there was no grudging, moaning, complaining, none of that. When she said, let the skies rent ascender, she meant to say she was explaining a simple cause and effect. You oppress, oppression has an effect. 
The effect is that the universe, which is there to help you reach your perfection, will start working against you. It's a simple cause and effect system that we need to understand. So Sayyid Azainab was explaining from that context, never from a context of selfish, you know, egoic point of view that sometimes we see uh, our, uh, our infallible as. They're never from them. They're from a very pure Tawhidi level. It doesn't matter to them because they know honor is from Allah. So stand up for Allah's sake. Speak the truth, but always know Surah Maida, Surah number five, one zero five. No one can, no one la No one can dis. No one can remove you from your spiritual status. People can physically harm you, but no one can spiritually move you from your spiritual status if you are a monotheist. You know, it's a high tall thing. That's why it's difficult to understand. But when you go on that spiritual path, it's very empowering. So how will you keep stop harming people? People will stop harming you because you become wise. You don't let people, you have to protect yourself, but you come from Tawheed and protect yourself because it's Allah's instructions. Uh, beautifully, okay, please, can you help me understand is parenting a little strictly mean? If Sister Sukena is here, if you can write it down, parenting, Sister Sukena Tower, she's awesome, uh, would be thinking as they're leaving in, please, can you help me understand is parenting a little Strictly mean child would be thinking as they're leaving in toxic, living in toxic relationship, living in toxic relationship. If you feel you're you're being, um, there are three types of parents: authoritarian parents, authoritative parents, and so on and so forth. Uh, I think there is uh, parents who are very, I forget the other word, um, uh, permissive parents. So read up on, on that number one. Uh, take help from uh, these parenting coaches, conscious parenting coaches, and take Imam Jafar Sadiq as your thing. Don't become so shaki. If you are putting boundaries for your children, 7 to 14, Imam himself has said, give them boundaries. Tell them this is your boundaries. Show them discipline. Then don't become shaki that, oh my God, they'll have, they'll have childhood trauma. Childhood trauma is when you're not making them feel loved and validated, when you're just undermining them. You only clap when they do good. So don't doubt yourself, Allah. Remember, I leave you with this ayat, which is my, I feel like inshallah, this ayat can go and penetrate into my heart. Wallahu ghalibu ala amri. Surah Yusuf, ayat number 21. Wallahu ghalibu ala amri, walakin aksara nas la ya'limun. Allah is always in control. Sometimes things seem chaotic, but remember there's an all-wise, all-perfect, all-merciful God always in control. There is always a solution. Don't doubt yourself. Believe in yourselves, believe in the Lord who's always in control, learn about him, know about him, feel him, unveil, uh, let go of those actions, those sins which are wailing us from Allah's light and love and mercy. I leave you with this metaphor. I know there are a lot of questions. Uh, as conscious parenting, talking on Ikra, okay, habit of putting you down, even forgiveness doesn't fill that emptiness and gives person feeling of unworthiness, can do Kataram as well, what can be done in this situation? Uh, someone has asked you when someone always makes you feel down, that's a clear self worth issue triggered. You might be having some self worth issues. You need to see a skilled practitioner who will help you walk through your triggers and then bring God's light back to you in your heart. That's how it works. Remember the RAIN acronym Surah Yusuf, Surah number 12, Ayat number 21. Okay. And I leave you with this metaphor which will tie the two things together. I have all the time in the world, but I think people need to leave. Uh, we have still time for Maghrib Salah. But I leave you with this. Imagine all of us, we had someone who was behind us, who was very, very powerful, who was always loving to us and who was very influential. And they had our hand on us. How would you feel? Someone who is very influential, very powerful, very loving towards us, where you know your heart knows that this person will always support me. Even if I do wrong, they will, st they will not stop loving me. How will it make you feel? How will it, you will feel so loved, you will feel so secure, right? You will be able to go through life feeling, yeah, I, you know, I have his back, I have his back. That's a lot to you and me. If your heart can feel secure, loved, cherished, valuable with Allah, you will be able to go through the sea of chaos, the sea of dishonor from a whole different place. 
because you know Allah is there for me. You know you're clear. If you've done wrong, go and apologize. If you've not done wrong, stay back. Learn communication skills, work on your trauma, work on your uh, things, and always know Allah is in control. Even though you might feel right now that things are chaotic, seek help. Don't sit. Seek help. Seek help. There is one question. I think that's a really good one. Uh, we've got five minutes. How to, cope sure, sure, no how to cope with anxiety caused by controlling behaviors of elders in the family? Because obviously we want to respect them. But how do we go about with that? Okay, to understand control, all control is based in fear. Remember? So all control is based in fear. If someone is controlling you, good. I'm so glad I didn't get a chance to speak on parents. Doctors, uh, parents is something very, very tricky because we're unable to, you know, respectfully speak our truth because we have this conditioning mindset of you can't disrespect our parents, which is 100%. Yeah, I uphold those values. I do not disrespect, you know, sometimes parents can be very controlling, do this, don't do that and all of that. So simple, very to the point, Sharia wise, if your parents are asking you to do anything, means in Islamic practices, if Allah has told you of anything, they're asking you to do haram, you can very respectfully say, uh, I can't, you know, this is against Allah's reasoning. Uh, Mom and dad, uh, please, can you help me, help make this easy for me because this is haram what you're asking me to do. If they're not asking you or they're controlling you and it's coming from a place of lack from themselves, which you can identify and you can see, uh, they're asking you to do things which are spiritually unethical, you know, ethically they're wrong, then you have to choose, make a choice. Number one, take responsibility of what I'm about to tell you. Take a decision, make own that decision. And for me, I have taken that decision upon myself that Allah in the Quran says, Allah, worship Allah, and then be kind to your parents. So that's tantamount to tawheed. So if my journey is towards becoming godly, manifesting godliness, and I want to, how can I? That means the sister's test is in how can she respectfully speak to a parent, even though we know that they're coming from a place of control, which is from fear, lack of tawheed and all of that, how can I still uphold my godly values and be respectful and say the truth, but not hurt them and do what they're telling me to do if it's not haram? How can I do that? It's a, it's a high toll. So high, uh, call. So how can I do that? With respect. What does respect look like? Make an intention. I do it. Ya Allah, I want to bring my best version to myself, to my parents. My parents are asking me to, you know, control someone or be unkind to my spouse, for instance, or do something wrong. Tell yourself this is a test for you. I can spiritually grow in this. So very respectfully, you go up to them and you tell them that mom or dad, uh, I don't want to disrespect you in any way and your words are on my head. I honor your words, right? And it's all coming from a place of tawheed. It's coming from a place of qurbatan lillah because Allah is saying bringing your best version to them, ahsan, right? So you speak that and then you say, can you please help me understand? Can you please? If your parents are at that state where they're unable to, um, you know, have, because generation is like that, they're not very EQ, mm -hmm. you know, emotionally intelligent to have these conversations. I simply say, okay, Papa. Mm -hmm. Okay, Papa. Okay, Mommy. That's, I tell you, my, my journey in spirituality has been expedited with this respecting your parents. It's a little bit difficult. We'll have another talk on this. Dr. Farooq has done two small talks on this. I'll send it on this. But if they're asking you to do haram, you can stand up. But if there is some view, some way you can be respectful and have conversations, do that. If they, you cannot even have conversations, okay, papa, okay, mommy, take a step back, pray about it to Allah, that Allah, you have instructed me to be my best version. I'm being my best version right now with my parents open a way for me where I honor them and I do what is the right thing. 
come for coaching we need to break this down so you need to understand you need to tell me exactly the situation we'll break it down maybe it's your trigger maybe you think you're the victim mindset and it's not often i've noticed that you think parents are controlling but they're just meaning well for you but we take it as control because we feel shame we will not be able to rise up to their that whole system will go back where we are feeling if i don't do this and i will not be affirmed and acknowledged and obliged and all of that and then you know, things will happen. So this needs a little bit more of, uh, you know, um, breaking up. Saying, okay, Papa, okay, Mommy, comes in when you have a very strong spiritual OED mindset Definitely. of doing, you know. Because a lot doing. of times, sometimes we think it's a generation gap where um, it sounds like rudeness, but you obviously saying it and you're standing up as well, isn't it, for your... Well, right. you can do it. You can stand up with respect and honor for them. Qurbatan lillah. As long as your intents are qurbatan lillah, it'll automatically have a, a regulation. It'll automatically have a, you know, you'll be able to regulate your situation. And Allah will guide you because your intents are pure. And then it needs, it won't be, it won't be fair if I give a blanket check because in my own journey, uh, sometimes I feel undermined with the situation with my mother and the mental health. But then it's a decision that I've made. I will never disrespect my mother, even though she might be wrong and irrational. Mm. What does disrespect look like? I don't have to agree to her. Yeah. But I can honor her, accept her, listen to her, and understand her where she's coming from. And now I know because there's so much issues. So understanding our parents, understanding where they're coming from, why they're saying what they're saying. And so it needs breaking down. I don't know. I'm no, Maybe I, I need think, to. I think you've covered it really well. Um, I mean, um, yes, because obviously in the in the past, I've always thought it's a two way relationship, right? I give in, that person gives in. But I think the way you've explained it so beautifully, I I think that's why. In we're... asantum, asantum, yeah. Leon, first of home. Yeah. You do good, you do it only for yourself. When I'm doing good to my parents, I'm only doing it for myself. I cannot make my mom and dad feel good about themselves. If they're still going to choose to criticize me, on them. Yeah. Allah himself says you do good you do it for yourself this is another empowering ayat which I've like tied with myself I cannot make you feel good about yourself if I choose respect I'm only choosing from a place where Allah has instructed me it's very endearing very empowering yeah no I think I think this is really beautiful because you know the way you're empowering um the women as well because we've just had that mentality um and you know it's going to take time with change as time. well and as time you said time. each one if we change ourselves um you know and that energy is out there uh we will obviously inshallah bring that change change well. is contagious so, absolutely yeah, that's what I like alhamdulillah, yeah. alhamdulillah. Absolutely. we've absolutely. seen that um as well with Ikra library I mean um going yeah. back so many months ago I wouldn't know where we started from, but alhamdulillah. Um, I think somebody's asked if anybody wants some coaching, can they just message sure. you and you can, can provide that support they can. as well. They can, um, absolutely. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, Sister Shazia. Uh, we will have some more sessions. Um, I do understand communication is really crucial as well. Um, as you know, you could say the same thing in a different way. I mean, I usually tell my kids as well, that same thing could have been said in a different way. Um, so I think communication is really crucial. So inshallah, we will have some more sessions. Uh, we will load this video by tonight, inshallah, on the Ikra Library YouTube channel so everyone can watch that as well um and you're okay to share the the powerpoint with me as well yeah shazia excellent um thank you so much i think sister shazia has put her number on the on the chat as well or if you want to message me i will pass you her details as well um thank you everyone and inshallah tomorrow we do have a session at 11 o'clock on uh, conscious parenting and it's relating to anger as well um and sister sukena tawa will be doing that session tonight at eight o'clock we've got a yoga session as well um something different uh, for our mind and our body as well um so we will see inshallah later on tonight at eight o'clock for the yoga session and tomorrow um, session at 11 o'clock uh, on conscious parenting. Thank you, everyone. And we'll see you next time. Zafis. <laughs>